Hi friends and welcome to part four of the eight part series called Hidden Truth. In our last video, part three, we discussed how rightly dividing is so important. We talked a little bit about dispensations or the dispensing of God's programs during the last 6,000 years. I mentioned how Paul became the minister of grace and how God kept the heavenly program a secret and how Jesus Christ delivered to Apostle Paul this secret information, the mystery that when the Jews rejected their Messiah, God would create the body of Christ, making them the fellow heirs with his son Jesus through the gospel of grace and for the uh, created heaven. Now, moving forward, our sin problem comes to us early on from the days of Adam and Eve. Adam fell from righteousness because he participated in disobeying the one command that God gave him. Not to eat the fruit from the tree of good and evil. And poor, poor Adam. Can you imagine how Adam felt when he realized what he had done? And... Every person born since Adam's fall is stained with Adam's sin. Since God is holy and righteous without error, without sin, we, having the stain of sin, cannot ever be in His presence. God is absolutely perfect in all His ways, a righteous, holy, and loving judge. Our sinful nature separates us from God forever. Fortunately for us, God is righteous and pure love, filled with mercy and compassion. He had a plan from the beginning, a plan to redeem his creation by providing a sacrifice, a free sacrifice, a gift through his son's death and resurrection. But that gift must be received. The gospel must be believed in order for you to be forgiven of your sins and be cloaked by the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Throughout history, God himself has never changed, but the way he's dealt with mankind has changed many times. An example of this would be our Lord God telling his people in time past to kill disobedient people by stoning them to death Obviously, this was a period of time much different from the rest and very different from today's program. The word dispensation is used to explain these different dispensings of God's instructions. All right, During a specific age or time period, how he dealt with people differently under different circumstances for various reasons and so on. We see the word dispensation four times in the King James Version, and they all happen to be in Paul's books. Now, on a side note, can you guess what word doesn't show up at all in the most popular corrupt version in use today, which happens to be the NIV, all right? You guessed it. The word dispensation is found zero times in the NIV. And I wonder why. All right. Okay, I digress. But let's let's take a look at these four verses that Paul wrote using the uh, KJ, the KJV. Now, let me see if I can. I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, on the screen so everybody can see it. All right dispensations the first first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 17 for if I do this for if I do this willingly I have a, a reward but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me in Ephesians 1:10, we see that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In Ephesians 3, 2, 
if ye have heard the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word in Colossians 1 25 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of grace which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God so we see four correct translations of Paul using the word dispensation and by context we can see the meaning of its use each time Paul mentions it now the dictionary defines the word dispensation as the following in the King James dictionary a dispensation is an arrangement of things in vines dictionary of New Testament words the word dispensation the first one the first meaning is uh, primarily signifies the management of a household or of household affairs the management or administration of the property of others and so a stewardship the unfolding of the completion of the divinely arranged or imparted cycle of truths which are consummated in the truth relating to the church as the body of Christ the arrangement or administration by God now the word dispensation simply breaks down this way it's the way God deals with people during time periods not so much the time period itself okay but it's the way or the method or the administration that God uses during those times now in the first three parts of hidden truth I loosely translated the word dispensation as what God uh, did during a period of time just to keep it simple to get the basic idea of what it means but at this point we need to be a little more specific as we're moving into more complex understanding of terms used in scripture so I want you to keep in mind that the word dispensation is more about how God deals with people all right okay moving along we saw earlier how God dealt or dispensed the use of uh, stoning in Exodus and Deuteronomy it's loaded with examples of stoning and obviously it's not being used in God's dispensation for today another example would be God telling Noah to build an ark to survive the flood but again that's not necessary for today especially when God promised to never destroy the world by flood and he gave us the rainbow as a symbol that of the promise that he made so look here with me at uh, Genesis Genesis 9 I think is where the rainbow part is Genesis 9 in chapter in verse 8 and God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him saying and I behold I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and I will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth and God said this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations I do set my bow in the cloud now God is speaking about the rainbow here and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall be more shall, shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth so we can see how the rainbow meaning is very significant it's a literal promise a sign 
we see all the time when it rains. It's God's promise not to ever destroy the world by flood again. And sadly, the enemy has stolen this wonderful sign of the rainbow. He's perverted it. He's twisted it, concealed it, uh, its true meaning, and assigned a wicked and evil meaning to it, using it as a sign of the, the homosexual liberation. We see the enemy stealing one of God's symbols once again. And by the way, you'll notice when you see a rainbow in the sky, it has seven distinct colors. And we know how God uses the number seven all throughout creation in covenants and in his word you know take note also that in stealing God's rainbow symbol the sodomites use six different colors this isn't a mistake friends the number six is the number of man and by doing this they're mocking God directly by removing his number from the from his symbol placing man above God the very same thing the Antichrist is gonna do it's no coincidence that his number will be 666 okay moving along in each dispensation God gave mankind certain rules or methods of how to uh, how to come to him if you approached him in a manner per the dispensation you were considered obedient if you approached him in a manner contradictory to the the dispensation rules you were considered disobedient and not accepted a good example of explaining this is Cain and Abel. Abel brought the blood sacrifice pres prescribed by God, and Cain brought an offering from the field that he had grown. Cain's offering probably took a lot of work and a lot of sweat to prepare. A good example of man, you know, trying to please God by using good works, but God accepted Abel's offering instead because Abel followed God's directions. God's specific dispensing or dispensation of instructions. Lord God specifically dispensed instructions for the sacrifice to be a blood sacrifice. Another example was when God told Abraham to be circumcised. If you were circumcised, you were accepted. If you weren't circumcised, God rejected you. In scripture we see God using the Jewish Apostle Paul to dispense his instructions to mankind for today. This specific dispensation was kept hidden in God even before creation. God kept it a secret even from all his angels and this will blow your mind but God kept it a secret from the sons of men including the son of man. Now Who's the son of man? That's right. It's Jesus. While he was on earth, prior to his crucifixion, he had no knowledge of the secret dispensation that would come after his crucifixion. He, because he limited his divine power to become fully man. Now, remember when he said, he didn't even know when the day of the Lord would take place, saying no one, not even the angels know, but only the Father. That's because his divine power was limited to be fully man to pay for man's sins. So think about it for a second. If Jesus didn't know the timing of the day of the Lord, if he didn't know about the next dispensation, which would be revealed to Paul, and it would contain the mystery of the body of Christ and the mystery of the rapture, then how is it that people can say Jesus talked about the rapture in the four Gospels. Many Christians are taught that the rapture can be found all throughout the Old Testament into the four Gospels, but the problem is Jesus himself didn't know about the rapture because it was a mystery and was only revealed to Paul. You see how important rightly dividing is without rightly dividing God's word we end up with nonsense and nonsense is the first step to creating false teaching and false teaching is the first step to creating a new denomination total confusion and it all comes from the author of confusion the secret also involved the heavenly program distinct from the earthly program which we're going to get into more in a future study 
What's important to consider at this point is how this mystery gospel was discovered by Paul. Paul didn't receive the dispensing of God's program through an angel. Paul didn't find scrolls in a cave somewhere. Jesus Christ revealed to Paul by revelation, not prophecy. It's important to understand, <clears throat> understand that it was by revelation over a period of time. Now remember, Paul wrote 13 books over a period of about uh, 30 about 30 years so let's take a look at uh, a few verses that Paul wrote explaining that the revelations he'd received from Jesus were in fact secret kept hidden from everyone else but Paul I'm gonna to let's see if we can open up Corinthians let's try to open up uh, here we go. 1 Corinthians 2 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. In Ephesians 3 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And there's a lot more in Ephesians 3. The entire chapter explains this mystery, where it comes from, and, and how it gets discovered. So I encourage you to look at uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and read the whole thing. In Colossians 1.26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Hid from ages. Okay, let's stop right there. What does that mean? What ages is Paul talking about here? The prior ages, before Jesus Christ reveals to Paul the mystery of the body of Christ, that after the Jews would reject their Messiah, a secret program of dispensation would take place. God would create a body of believers and make them fellow heirs with his only begotten Son. Also, it was hid from the age of the kingdom program the one the one Jesus was in uh, while he walked the earth uh, the mystery was hid we saw from from earlier with the rapture being hidden until it was revealed to Paul later on and why Jesus couldn't have talked about it during that time because he didn't know it, it was hidden he didn't know about it so some more details about Paul we read in the book of Acts that Saul was a fierce enemy of Christ and the cross until he was confronted by Jesus on the way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. Saul was shown that Jesus really uh, was the Messiah of Israel and the King of the Jews. After being confronted with the truth by Jesus himself, Saul believed and was saved and his name was changed to Paul but he was saved under a different dispensation okay it was the earthly gospel of the kingdom program now why the dispensation of the kingdom because at this point there was no gospel of grace the dispensation of grace alone uh, it hadn't been revealed to Paul just yet this mystery of creating a body of believers in Christ Jesus okay now understand that Paul was saved under the kingdom age, the kingdom program, the kingdom dispensation. This mystery was kept hidden in God. Okay, and it would be revealed to Paul later on in time through revelation. One of the most concerning things for me today is that most Christians don't understand this information. Even worse, they're not told this information is in the Bible. Most denominations today will skirt around all of this to keep people in bondage under the law, stuck in the dispensation of, a, of the kingdom program, okay, never knowing the true gospel for today. Given to us by Jesus Christ himself, by revelation through the Apostle Paul. In most cases, they end up mixing both dispensations, uh, two gospels together, I'm talking specifically about the gospel of the circumcision, 
the prophetic program, the earthly kingdom pro, uh, gospel, and mixing it into Paul's gospel. The dispensation of salvation by grace alone, the creation of the body of Christ, who will inherit not the earthly kingdom, but instead were promised the heavenly kingdom. Remember, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, two programs. One was kept hidden and revealed to Paul. Now, Paul too was concerned about this mixing of the dispensations. And you can see that. Uh, look here in Galatians. Galatians 2, 7. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Here Paul is saying that they were already attempting to mix what was revealed to Paul. The mystery gospel for the body of Christ and the gospel of Peter, okay, whose gospel was of another. For the, the Jewish prophetic program, the kingdom of heaven on earth. By mixing the two gospels, you're mixing the earthly program for the Jews with the heavenly program for the body of believers. Paul gives a stern warning concerning this uh, in Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtly, subtlety, so that so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if, <clears throat> for, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Paul writes another stern warning in Galatians. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received let him be accursed this is serious folks Paul is warning whoever preaches anything other than the gospel revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ himself will be cursed. That's very, 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 very serious, my friends. By mixing the two gospels under two different dispensations, it's actually the same as preaching another Jesus, which is exactly what every false teacher out there is doing. Something to consider here is that the setting aside of the dispensation of the kingdom on earth okay is temporary and it will begin once again at the start of Daniel's 70th week so the gospel of grace Paul's gospel for today for the building of the body of Christ will come to an end with the harpazo the rapture then the dispensation of the earthly program will start up once again into Daniel's seven-year period and into the 1,000 year reign on earth. The only way to understand this is by rightly dividing God's word. Okay, according to 2 Timothy 2.15 and 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Okay, so... This ends part four of Hidden Truth. My hope and prayers are that you're learning just how important right division truly is and how dangerous not rightly dividing can be. Grace and peace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families. And I shall see you on Hidden Truth part five.